portable device and a home console in one thing. Nintendo's new hybrid device is going to be released on the 3rd of March, and we need to round up the good and the bad things that we know so far. I'm going to avoid the weirdness of the presentation, we've all saw it. Don't know why you need a couch for a 3 second useless relaxation scene or why you need a guy from Splatoon wearing weapons on stage. That stuff is irrelevant to the console itself, but in my opinion, the structure, tone and the vibe of the presentation were strange. Anyway, let's get to important stuff. The hardware, let's be honest here, it ticks all the marks, but only barely reaches the acceptable bar. You know, like in the amusement park, they have you need to be this tall to get on the right thing, let's give Nintendo that. Switch is okay from the hardware standpoint, and its hair just touches the tall enough to get on the right sign. 720p on the go, 3 hour battery, 32GB of storage, USB Type-C and 300 price tag are not perfect. Not something to be proud of, but it's in the yeah alright zone. Yes, in the era where we talk about HDR, 4K, VR and Project Scorpio, it's hard to put Switch in the same category, but it has that mobility and other things that no other device has. Nintendo is still trying to convince us that motion controls are great to play games with. They might be improved again, but focusing on them, giving them so much time during conferences and full price release games dedicated to them is kinda too much. The counter argument is that hey, nobody is forcing you to play with them, they are just there. But that's not the reason why this focus is wrong. PlayStation 4 controller has this big tracking thing in the middle nobody asked for. It has an accelerometer, but none of this was ever the focus for Sony. And remember when Microsoft focused on voice commands, Kinect and TV? Yeah, it got them far back behind Sony even before the race began. The same thing is happening with Switch. Your message during such big events should be pretty clear and focused. No motion controls, no HD rumble, say how easy it is to dock in and dock out, how responsive and comfortable it is to play both at home and on a move. Instead we got a missed message. Oh and by the way, Nintendo should bundle one to switch with the console. And they should sell more modes and minigames for one to switch as DLC. Nintendo actually has a really good history with DLC such as Mario Kart 8 and Hyrule Warriors. These should be an example for most companies how to do DLC after the launch of the game. And in the one to switch situation, it would actually be reasonable to have few minigames to show off new rumble and motion control, to sell people on these features. And then if you want more, you can have more. And if you don't, you don't need to buy anything. You got this one for free with the console. Both Wii Sports and Nintendo Land were one of the best showcases of the new consoles and controllers. Why not do the same with one to switch Ok ok, maybe one to switch is insanely valuable. But chop one minigame here, few minigames there and put them bundled with the console. And why forcing people who have hands on with the console to play Mario Kart 8 and ARMS with motion controls? Let them play how they want to play and let them spread the right information that actually needed. Yes, not all the games were restricted, but why do that in the first place? Oh, because then nobody would try your motion controls. Maybe that is your answer Nintendo. Now on to the software. Zelda looks good, you can't argue with that. But is it enough for the launch day or window? I feel like this is a weird debate. You do want to come home from the store with a new hardware and many games to play. But do you need though? I tried over and over again to make up my mind whether it is important right now to Switch have a great launch catalog or not. You see, we all want Switch to have an awesome lineup. All Nintendo games on March 3rd, a bunch of indie games, Minecraft, third party games, that's understandable. But on the other hand, I feel like there are not many potential Switch buyers who don't already have any gaming system of some sort. So does it really need a good launch lineup to survive? Nintendo has no competition in terms of console releases at March. There is no other company going to release hardware in the same time as Switch. Project Scorpio is probably heading for the middle or the end of the next year. And, and Sony are too comfortable with PS4 sales, VR and Pro to care about next hardware right now. So why not release the Switch in March with just Zelda and give Mario Kart, Splatoon, Super Mario Odyssey and others to arrive later in the year. Same as hardware, I feel like software is in the ok zone for 2017. But the fact that there is not enough big third party support is bothering. It looks like most of those companies are in the same army of uncertainty and I feel it would be hard to convince them to support Switch regardless of the launch lineup. Yes, we are getting just Skyrim, not even Skyrim Special Edition, and not new Mario Kart, but the deluxe version of 8, and which version of FIFA Switch is getting is also in question. Remember that after a few years EA finished their support for sports games for Vita, the same thing might happen here. Nintendo should make a roadmap for the next few years and point out when the main components of Switch software catalog will be released. The sales of Zelda should be through the roof for sure, probably close to one game for every Switch bot, but will it be the same for third party games? 
Will first buyers help Nintendo to succeed? It is important for third-party developers to see the interest in their games, especially in times when Nintendo is struggling to convince most of them to support their platform. The thing that might end up happening is that because the launch window is not strong enough, so the Switch will be bought only by Super Nintendo fans, that would buy it regardless, but then they will not support the third parties and will only buy first-party games, so sales will not be impressive, which could lead to the future minimal or full lack of support from those developers. Those guys only care about money to be made, they don't care how cute your system might be or that your game can be played on a bus, they want sales numbers, and if they will not see any, this might turn ship away from Switch pretty quick, and it would be very hard to change their mind later in the future. It looks like EA and Ubisoft are skeptical, and they are only bringing old games to see if it will be worth it. You wouldn't ever see such treatment to other consoles. If you know something is coming from Ubisoft, you damn right sure it's going to be on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. While Switch is looked as an outsider, they don't want to risk it, and the Wii and the Wii U is the reason for that. It will be hard to earn that respect from third-party companies back. Even Dragon Age would be great on Switch. Maybe Mass Effect. Yeah, but probably in another life. That is why you might need a strong launch window. To get more units out. To prove that this device is interesting not only for hardcore fans, but to a much wider audience. Nevertheless, for now this launch window arguably is pretty bad. According to Nintendo, Switch will have great third-party support. And that they believe in the Switch. If that is the case, Nintendo better start pointing out not only which games are coming to Switch, but when they are coming. How many of them are exclusives, or some sort of exclusive, and which game will have Switch version? Will they be released same day on Switch as other consoles? Because by the time all those great third-party support will arrive on Switch, it might be too late. Let's move on to the online service. If you can even call it a service. Ok guys, let's be honest here. I can make an argument and see some logic behind most of the Switch announcements, but this one... Oof. This one I feel is indefensible. I was okay with Wii U eShop and all that. Yeah, it's not perfect, but free online play, sometimes okay deals, navigation is subpar, but it was free. I think it was one of the positives of the Wii U, and one of the good things that were on Nintendo's side. Now though, I don't even know how to justify it. It's much worse than the competitors, and questionable to exist in an unknown state at all. Not really many online games to care about even for the online feature so far. Yes, when Splatoon is coming, it still will be free, but how many people will be willing to pay for playing it? Which again, could damage not only console, but the future of that franchise. And the whole idea of giving out one game from NES and SNES era is just, how are you planning to compete with this? And it's gone after that month? No way, no way, there must be something else. How can you come up with something like that and feel like it would fit and be comparable with other services? And that's in a world where, you know, the people bitch about getting multiple games on PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Gold all the bloody time and feel like they don't get value out of it. Nintendo online service better be $1 a month, or I just don't see it living even through 2017 in its current announced state. And I for one rarely see value and pay for PlayStation Plus and Gold, but Nintendo's online service left me speechless. Online voice chat is restricted to an app which is not even on a console, but online chat is built in most of the devices nowadays, so I don't really think it's a huge problem. How do you connect with players in the same lobby though? Will the app show anything or you can only talk with people from your friends list? Uh, accessories! They are now made of gold, apparently. Pricing is over the top, but hey, there is a HD rumble, and that's almost royal rumble if you might. Uh, it's not just a month before console release, and Nintendo is silent about some regular features. In a recent interview with Kotaku, Nintendo avoided half of the questions. You could say something, at least you know, about things that were so used in the console space that they couldn't even think someone would launch a console in 2017 without those features, but here we are. I want Switch to do well, I want great big games on the go, I want all those cool indie titles with me all the time, I want Mario, I want Zelda, but why are you doing it this way, Nintendo? Why now? Why release a console if you only have one big game in the launch catalog? Wouldn't another half a year help you? Your online service, console itself, give more time for exclusives, develop more third-party connections, and that weird focus on the home console is putting them in the wrong market, and with current competitors they have no chance to compete with. You are making a unique product, so push for that. Don't compare yourself against Sony and Microsoft. Because while they are moving forward with 4K, VR, HDR and all that stuff, Nintendo is trying to catch up to today, and by the time they will catch up, industry will lean forward even more, leaving Nintendo far behind again. There is an argument that nobody buys Nintendo's console to play third party, but after Wii U fiasco, it's not really an argument anymore. 
You can't explain your shareholders that lost profit is okay. You can't explain that you shouldn't sell Mario for every gaming platform and only sell it on Switch. That instead of just opening gates and releasing every Nintendo developed game for everything and becoming just developer slash publisher, you should still be a hardware maker. That idea is harder and harder to push every generation. 8 million Mario Kart 8 copies were sold for the console that had sold only 13 million units. That is an insane ratio you rarely ever see anywhere else. For example, Uncharted 4, key PlayStation 4 title, sold 8.7 million copies for 50 million console units sold. An idea that Japan is the main market for Nintendo, that they will buy everything Nintendo produced is partially true, but it's not substantial and big enough. Look at this chart for sales for Wii U. Not only America's region bought twice as much hardware, but they almost bought four times as much software as Japanese region. You can't target your hardware just for Japan, you need to be much wider and wiser in terms of creating a product nowadays. And yes, 3DS sales are different where Japan region is the biggest, but remember, Nintendo is saying that Switch is a home console and emphasizes on that. Will it affect sales somehow? We can only guess. I still like Nintendo, they feel like a gaming company that's having fun. I still think that Nintendo is a company with heart and soul and not just dollar bills in their eyes. And I can't really say that often in this industry. But they should be aware of their surroundings and maybe it is time to focus and deliver something broader and appeal to a wider audience. Work on their third party support, fill the gaps with some sort of trophy system and a better online system that they have right now. Get those exclusives not only on time, but in the best form they ever been. And you can't make mistakes when you launch a console. One minor mistake can cause you years and put you behind so far that you will not be able to catch up. Will Nintendo learn their lesson? Or will it be too late? Let's wait and find out. Console release and E3 will be crucial. And I think we all want healthy and good Nintendo on the market. It's good for the fans and for competition. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.